So we're, here we have an article from Nature, the quote-unquote prestigious scientific journal. This is on ni uh, 9th of September 2021, so it's fairly recent. Well, when I say fairly recent, it's less than six months old anyway. This is what they claimed. Face masks for COVID passed their largest test yet. A rigorous study finds that surgical masks are highly protective, but cloth masks fall short. So, what is the study? This, uh, this is from the article in Nature. Face masks protect against COVID-19. That's the conclusion of a gold standard clinical trial in Bangladesh, which backs up the findings of hundreds of previous observational and laboratory studies. Critics of mask mandates have cited that the lack of relevant randomized clinical trials, which assign participants at random to either a control group or an intervention group, but the latest finding is based on a randomized trial involving nearly 350,000 people across rural Bangladesh. The study's authors found that surgical masks, but not cloth masks, reduced transmission of SARS-CoV-2 in villages where the research team distributed face masks and promoted their use. So basically nature is saying that, yes, we finally have the evidence that face masks protect against COVID-19 and their conclusion is from the study sorry that they're saying that the studies found that the, there was reduced transmission of SARS-CoV-2 in villages that had the surgical masks distributed and promoted now here's the study itself you can just look up the title there on Google or whatever you want and DuckDuckGo, I'd recommend don't use Google. <laughs> it's uh, it's biased, completely biased. Um, yeah, so look up that study. The problem, that, uh, not a big problem, but there is a problem that it's not peer reviewed. So be aware of that when you're reading the study that it hasn't been evaluated by scientific peers to you know to analyze whether or not uh, there are confounding factors, whether or not the statistics actually say what the data say so it's it's not peer-reviewed it is a good study though it is a big study so it's just something to be aware of that there might be might be areas in the study that they might give a, a conclusion that's not necessarily the stated conclusion and we'll come into that later so here's the figure one from the study itself from the results section of the study and um, we're just looking at the B Section intervention effect on symptomatic seroprevalence by mask type. So symptomatic seroprevalence means that they had symptoms and they tested positive, I think by the PCR test. So in the comparison villages, those are the villages where they did not provide masks and they did not promote their use. Now that's not saying that the masks weren't being worn, they, you know, the villages do, did wear masks and mask wearing was promoted you know, um, by the government or by businesses. So it's these villages, they did have masks and they did have promotion, but it just wasn't, the, the masks weren't distributed by the authors of the study and they weren't, didn't have the additional promotion by the authors of the study. So that's the comparison villages. The cloth mask villages, obviously that's where they distributed cloth masks and surgical mask villages is where they distributed surgical masks and both they would promote their use. So look here, uh, in the comparison villages where there's no distribution or promotion of the cloth masks by the study authors, found that they had a 0.76% of symptomatic seroprevalence in the population. The cloth mask villages, after they had you know, promoted the use and distributed them over the time frame of the study, found that they had a 0.74% seroprevalence, symptomatic seroprevalence. So that means they have a reduction, a relative reduction of 5%. Now that's, okay, so, so, okay, so cloth masks did improve the, um, the did reduce transmission of the COVID-19. However, look to the right of that 0.74% and you see there's a p-value there of 0.5%. Now I can tell you that is a really, that p-values are a measure of the statistical significance of a set of data. Now the p-value, 
to be sick like, uh, generally in science they would consider a p-value of 0 0.05 as the cutoff mark mark for being statistically significant above that if you have a number greater than 0 0.05 they would consider that not to be statistically significant and below that they would and you have degrees of stati statistical significance so 0 0.05 it's it's statistically significant but it's not very significant so you for something like um if it was does a does a drug cause cancer and the results were 0 0.05 had a p value of 0 0.05 percent you say well you know this is a very important issue i'm not going to conclude that this drug is safe because that that's not enough confidence <laughs> that's only i'm 95 percent sure that it doesn't um doesn't cause cancer so that's that's not significant enough for um the safe safety concerns of a drug now for something like this mask study yeah 0 0.05 maybe you would consider it to be an appropriate percentage but it's still not you know it's still not very significant statistic statistically so just be aware that you know it, it's borderline when it's 0 0.05 it's borderline significant so that's when we get to the surgical masks is 0 0.043 so it's sig statistically significant sure there is a decrease there but you know the it's not that statistically significant so you could draw the conclusion that you would have a reduction in transmission but at the same time you're saying well that reduction could just entirely be due to um, just normal distribution of of data it, it could just be entirely the chance likely it has a it has a significant impact but yeah you, you'd have to, yeah, it's not it's not set in stone now look at this this is where it gets interesting because they just the nature.com or in, you know all the news outlets and the mainstream media they'll all say yeah they'll all hail this study as proof that masks work but like i was saying it's hardly statistically that statistically significant and even then the reduction isn't that great it's 11 point it's 11.2 percent re relative reduction relative reduction whatever that means i don't know i should have researched that before <laughs> now i sound ignorant but anyway look we have a reduction sure we have a reduction in the percentage. I can I can only see it's got a seven percent decrease. I don't know whether what this eleven point two percent is, but anyway, um, probably because of the number. Yeah, it's the number of um, people. See, in the surgical masks villages, there was a thousand. You see on the left there, a thousand, a hundred and six thousand two hundred one people. Whereas in the cloth masks and okay, and the comparison villages were one hundred and forty six thousand okay anyway so there's 11.2 we'll take the number it's 11.2 percent reduction which is okay instead of having you know a um, hundred thousand cases you'll have what uh, 90 thousand cases for a 10 percent um, reduction right I don't know is that is that does that make you feel better <laughs> I don't know. it's not that great but it gets even worse look at this let's let's look at the reduction by age group so for the 60 plus years we have a decrease of 34 percent of symptomatic seroprevalence so that's quite that's quite large okay now we're getting like there's a third less cases in those group in the age group of 60 years above in the surgical masks villages so that's good you've reduced the caseload by 30 percent 34 percent that's good however and look at the p-value there 0 0.001 so it's very significant that decrease it's very significant beautiful 50 to 60 years old look at this 23 so i still had a 23 percent reduction which is good and and it's still quite uh, statistically significant 0 0.01 remember 0 0.05 is sort of it's the cutoff it's not statistically significant after that that's good yeah okay that's good now look at let's look at people below 50 in the 40 to 50 years old group there's 
no statistical significant decrease the p-value is off the charts in terms of <laughs> poor statistical significance and the reduction itself is only a 0.01 percent so absolutely hopeless yeah absolutely hopeless um surgical masks for people below 50 and the same for people below 40. so absolutely useless um, for those two age groups so when nature wrote up their article did they did they read this like did they in, <laughs> did they bother to say it only reduced transmission in those above 50 years old but did nothing for those below 50. I wonder why they didn't include that so let's look at the um, results here just from the study itself in control villages 24% of observed individuals practiced physical distancing compared to 29% in intervention villages so they're saying that in the villages where the masks weren't given and weren't promoted there were there was 24% of physical distancing now when there were masks promote, um, distributed and promoted you had a 5% increase in physical distancing so the masks mask promotion and distribution also increased behavioral patterns of people so so that they would um, be more cognizant of their physical distancing and probably other measures as well and and we'll just continue reading here there was substantial heterogen heterogeneity I don't know, across locations now now I sound really bad in markets individuals become 6.4 percent percentage points more likely to physically distance so the mask promotion and distribution also increased physical distancing endorsing mask wearing and informing people about its importance encouraged rural Bangladeshis to take the pandemic more seriously and engage in another form of self-protection the increases in physical distancing were similar in cloth and surgical mask villages so that's remarkable that the use and promotion of masks or endorsing endorsement and infor, inf, informing people encouraged physical distancing and other self-protective behaviors so that's interesting so let's sum it up here for this Bangladesh study number one it's not peer-reviewed okay there's low statistical significance for surgical masks remember it was 0.04 something percent so it's not it is statistically significant but it's not that statistically significant and even worse below the age group of 50 it's absolutely not statistically significant at all so it's only in those higher age groups it's not statistically significant for cloth masks either and it increased other protective behaviors in those can found the study so they can say we had a reduction in COVID-19 transmission in the elderly but was that due to the masks or was it due to the physical distancing or other protective measures maybe maybe the elderly people when they start seeing a whole lot of people wearing masks outside they say wow maybe I'll just stay home <laughs> maybe maybe I'll ask my daughter to bring me something from the market rather than me go to the market itself so you can draw a conclusion and say well therefore masks themselves reduced community transmission because you have all these other you have the other factors that confound the other variables that confound that study so no the Bangladeshi study does not prove that masks decrease community transmission of SARS-CoV-2 sorry but it doesn't so you know how can I'm, I'm just a you know I'm nobody I'm just a carpenter <laughs> okay I've gone to university in that but I'm just a carpenter how can I see this in this light when the when the you know these people in the that um, work for nature and other scientific journals you know these big scientific heads how can they 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 can't miss all this obviously they can't miss they know all this you know the the results section where it shows under 50s is no statistical significant reduction in symptomatic prevalence seroprevalence it's it's black and white and yet 
when they write up their article, they say that, wow, we've finally found, you know, the, this gold standard study finally, we've finally um, beat all these anti-vaxxers and all these anti-mask. <laughs> it's, it's outrageous that they could write an article like that with that study in front of their eyes. It just shows, it just destroys their credibility, absolutely destroys their credibility. I'll, I'll never, I'll never read nature with a um, trusting eye again, never. <laughs> After this, it's pure propaganda. Propaganda. A rigorous study, they said, that surgical masks are highly protective. Are highly protective when there's no a highly for a start. The significance was 0.04. That's not even that statistically significant. The reduction. It was only an 11 percent reduction in in the, in, in, in total. 11% relative reduction, which is, okay, it's alright, but you know, you're going to save, you're going to stop 1 in 10 cases of COVID, okay, whatever, and it didn't protect at all for those under 50, and okay, sure, there was reduction, and good reduction in those above 50, but at the same time, you had all these problems with the confounding variables, like physical, the increase in physical distancing, so absolute rubbish, nature, shame on you. <laughs> you are not science, you are politics. Terrible, terrible propaganda. All right, let's carry on. Uh, Johns Hopkins uh, University, uh, or Bloomberg School of Public Health, if, that's, if there's a difference there, I guess so. Um, this study here, trends in county level COVID-19 incidents in counties with and without a mask mandate. So the, so the, Kansas, the state of Kansas issued a mask mandate and this study, or I'll just read this, I'll take. Following the introduction of a statewide mask mandate on July 3, 2020, Kansas counties adopting the mandate witnessed a 6% reduction in COVID-19 incidents by August 23. So, yeah, a month, a month and 20 days, a month and a half really, after the mandate, they had a 6% reduction in COVID-19. Um, while incidents doubled over the same period in counties opting out of the mask mandate. So, wow. Okay. So that, there we go. <laughs> we have a final, a final answer to the to the debate, right? That the incidents in COVID-19 doubled in with in the counties that did not have the mask mandate, and we had a six percent reduction. Which six percent isn't that much anyway. But all right. So <laughs> we had a six percent reduction in COVID-19 incidents in counties that did have the mask mandate. The introduction of a mask mandate alone is unlike wait, wait what, what? The introduction of a mask mandate alone is unlikely to count to account for those incidence differences. Huh? There you go. As counties with mask mandates also implemented complementary mitigation strategies to control COVID-19 transmission. So in other words, the study's useless. <laughs> we'll just read the limitations because yeah. People will hail this study and say, look, counties with the mandates had a reduction, counties without the mandates had an increase. But look at here. The authors compare COVID-19 incidents with counties with and without mask mandates, county level differences in mask wearing behaviours, mask ordinance, ordinance implementation and ordinance inform, enforcement limit attribution of um, incidence reductions to policy implementation alone. So they're saying they've already got, ca they've already got variables in behaviour and implementation within the counties so there's already problems there that you know will conf confound the study now continue counties introducing a mask mandate would also be more likely to impose other restrictions e.g restaurant business occupancy restrictions suspension of mass gatherings and that these would likely affect COVID-19 transmission dynamics in fact, over half of counties, 54% of counties with a mask mandate, introduced at least one other COVID-19 mitigation strategy, while fewer than 10% of counties without a mask mandate implemented such measures. So you can't say f with any degree of certainty at all whether or not the reduction in COVID-19 incidents was due to the masks or whether it was due to these other strategies, these other mandates or restrictions, or was it even due to, like in the previous study, was it due to an increase in 
um, behavioral patterns as a result of the masks wearing like for instance the physical distancing increase the preferring to stay home order online not go to mass gatherings you know all those sort of things could have contributed to the reduction and you cannot conclude with any degree of certainty that the masks themselves reduce transmission in addition other unmeasured factors like behavior behavior change in response to rising COVID-19 incidents could have different impacts on COVID-19 incidents in opt-in versus opt-out counties. This limits the degree to which COVID-19 incidence differences can be attributed to the effectiveness of mask mandates. So, does a Kansas study prove that masks decrease community transmission of SARS-CoV-2? Well, what, what would have gone through? More than half counties, more than half the counties with mask mandates also implemented other restrictions such as business, restaurant occupancy limitations and gathering restrictions. So we have other measures as well as the mask measures that are confounding our study. 90% of counties without a mask mandate did not impose additional restrictions or limitations so that the increase could be, in fact, most likely is, and I'll tell you it is, <laughs> just from the study, but I'll tell you it is, due to those other restrictions and other behavioural changes. And behavioural changes resulting from mandates, rising case incidents could confound the study. We already know that. So, nope, sorry, the Kansas study proves nothing. Here we've got another one by Leu et al. Community use of face masks in COVID-19, evidence from a natural experiment of state mandates in the US. This will be an interesting one. Mandating face mask use in public is associated with a decline in the daily COVID-19 growth rate. Okay, so this study did find that there is an association between mandating masks and the decline in the COVID-19 growth rate. Okay, but we know better than to take anybody's word for it. We have to look at the study itself. Let's have a look. So the analysis was conducted at a state level rather than a county level. Some counties did not implement the mask mandate and that would confound the statewide results. For instance, you can have a state and imagine... Say 50% of the counties in that state implemented the mask mandate and 50% did not. Now, if you had a reduction in COVID-19 numbers, would you, or the growth rate in, this, in terms of the study, would you conclude, therefore, that it's due to the masks? Well, how could you? Because only 50% of, st of the state had the mask mandate. It's possible that they did, but you could not you could not um, draw a positive conclusion from that because it's 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 taken a statewide number from only 50 percent there could be huge variations within those counties other than the mask since there's or only 50 percent of the of the counties implementing the mask so yeah so yeah it could it could be attributable to that but it's only an association it's definitely not a conclusion so those counties with a mask mate mandate did they impose additional restrictions or limitations like we saw in the previous Johns Hopkins study. Mm. Well, the study didn't mention that. Were there behavioral changes resulting from mandates like we saw in the Bangladeshi study that could introduce confounding factors? And as importantly as well, mandates increase cloth mask use, which do not reduce SARS-CoV-2 transmission, which we saw also in the Bangladeshi study. And as well as that, we'd, we'd like to see the numbers of um, the age groups that were affected. Is it, is it like in the Bangladeshi study, where those below 50 had no statistical um, decrease in COVID-19 transmission? You know, there's just so much wrong with these studies. They just take an association and they therefore correlation equals causation. You know, they, just, they really, really, really want this to be true, <laughs> that masks work. And it's just simply not conclusive so no it's possible but the study did not prove it with any degree of certainty now we have another one um this one and an it analyzes the effects of covid19 mask mandates on hospital resource consumption and mortality now this is at the county level so this will be an interesting one 
Um, we assess the effects of a county-wide mask order on per population mortality, intensive care unit utilization, and ventilator utilization in Vexa County, Texas. So, a discussion. We performed a before and after analysis of a county-wide mandate for public mask use on rates of COVID-19 infection, mortality, ICU utilization, and ventilator utilization. We found that in both unadjusted and adjusted assessments, the caseload for all of the measured outcomes increased after the mask orders went in place. And on visual assessment, there appeared to be no readily apparent effect in reducing resource consumption after implementation of the mask order. Our findings suggest that mask orders alone cannot be expected to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. So they were measuring the rates of COVID-19 infection, they were measuring the number of deaths, they were measuring the number of people on ICU and the number of people on ventilators, and all of these increased after the mandates. So the mandates did not reduce any of these factors or any of these, um, yeah, <laughs> any, of, any of these, um, things <laughs> for a terrible word they did not reduce any of them the mask mandates so the conclusion is we were unable to detect a reduction in per population daily mortality hospital bed ICU bed or ventilator occupancy attributable to the implementation of a mask order so did it detect that mask decrease well we've just already said there's no reduction in COVID-19 infections no, no reduction in mortality no reduction in ICU or ventilator utilization after the mandates. So, nope, sorry, at a county level in Bexar County, Texas, the study showed that there was no reduction at all in COVID-19 infection and hospital resource consumption. Okay, here's another one. Uh, mask mandate and use efficacy for COVID-19 containment in the U.S. states. Randomized control trials have not clearly demonstrated mask efficacy against resp respiratory viruses and observational studies conflict on whether mask use predicts lower infection rates. We hypothesized that statewide mask mandates and mask use were associated with lower COVID-19 case growth rates in the United States. All right, so that's saying, like, funnily enough, in Nature was saying, the Nature article, quote unquote, was saying that, um, you know, the Bangladeshi study confirmed observational and laboratory studies. Well, this study, this peer reviewed study, is saying that no, sorry, randomized control trials have not clearly demonstrated this. And the observational studies do conflict on whether mask use predicts lower infection rates. Anyway, so the study's authors were saying, well, we reckon that mask use and mask mandates should be associated with lower COVID-19 growth rates in the United States. So here's, here are the results. Um, look up in, on section A here. It just gives an idea of what we're measuring. So that we have the minimum there or the minima. That is the lower case growth rate during the surge. So we'll have a surge, the lower case growth rate is the minimum, then we also have a maximum growth rate, and the difference between the two is the surge itself. Um, so we have, it's color coded here, if you look on the bottom left corner, we have the, when the mandates were put in place, we have the 18th of April, the 29th of May, the 8th of July, and the 1st of August, and in red there we have no mandate. So look over at C, now the minimum case growth rate it looks like there's a lower case growth rate for the the early mandates you know the ones that were issued in 18 of April it looks like that you know because you know, because of that mandate we had a lower growth rate then say uh, in green there the mandate that was issued uh, on the 8th of July a couple of months later However, if you look up the top, uh, underneath the, the natural log minima title there under C, 
is n.s, that means not statistically significant. So, okay, maybe the and maybe it did decrease the minimum case growth rate during a surge. Maybe, uh, you know, statistically, maybe a little bit, not statistically significant, but maybe it did decrease it. However, look at f, the maximum growth rate, and we see here that basically, well, actually, <laughs> if you look, compare the early mandate, which is in purple there, to the no mandate at all, which is in red, the mean of the no mandate at all is actually lower, it has a lower growth rate than the early mandate. So, but again, it's not statistically significant, so you wouldn't draw any conclusions from that other than the fact that, nope, I would not conclude that the mandates did anything to reduce the maximum case growth rate over this period of time. And this is in fact what they found in the discussion. Our main finding is that mask mandates and use likely did not affect COVID-19 case growth. Mask mandates were associated with greater mask use, but ultimately did not influence, influence total normalized cases or post-mandate case growth. So in other words, mask mandates were useless. Now, okay, so this was at a statewide level. So again, we still have the problems of, um, you know, were the confounding factors. But unlike uh, the other studies where we had an increase in case growths, in some states and, a, and a, a reduction in others, this finds that there was no increase at all. In, um, no, sorry, there was no reduction in all at all in the case growth rate. So even if 50% of the start of the counties in a state had um, implemented mask mandates and 50% didn't, it doesn't matter because there was no case growth rate increase in any of the states. Well. It, and statewide, uh, I think overall there was no increase. So, yeah, I would, I would, I would conclude that masks, mask mandates, anyway, are useless. And continue on in the study here. They just had this little part to st to say, and I thought this is quite interesting, quite important. Our findings do not support the hypothesis that greater public mask use decreases COVID nineteen spread. So remember, they um, they found that the mask mandates did increase case uh, mask use, but it did not result in a reduction in case growth. As masks have been required in many settings, it is prudent to weigh potential benefits with the harms. Masks may promote social cohesion during a pandemic, but risk compensation can also occur. That means like um, you might. Um, Play with your mask, or you maybe you have a feeling of security, so you do more um, engage in more risky behaviour, like go to you know, I don't know um, gatherings where there's no social distancing or something like that. So they're saying risk compensation can occur, meaning that masks, wearing a mask may lead to engaging in riskier activity, and it, that may occur. Um, by obscuring non-verbal communication, masks interfere with social learning in children. Well, that's obvious, right? If a child can't see your face, can't see your expression, of, <laughs> I mean, of course it's going to interfere with the learning in children. Likewise, masks can, use, can distort verbal speech and remove visual cues to the detriment of individuals with hearing loss, when that goes without saying. Um, prolonged mask use, that's greater than four hours a day, promotes facial alkalinization and inadvertently encourages dehydration. It's a problem which in turn can enhance barrier breakdown and bacterial infection risk. British clinicians have reported masks to increase headaches and sweating and decrease cognitive precision. And it just says that um, uh, with those headaches and sweating and cogn decrease in cognitive precision, that's associated with clin uh, medical errors of these Br British clinicians, which is a problem. So it does the getter. Um, study detect that masks are associated with lower COVID-19 growth rates in the United States. They were the mandates were associated with greater mask use. However, there was no reduction or no significant reduction in minimum case growth, and there was no reduction in maximum case growth, case growth rate after the mandate or with no mandate at all. 
So there's no difference between the two, between the mask mandate, the early, or the early, the medium, or the late mandate, and no mandate at all. Absolutely no difference. So nope. Sorry again. There is absolutely no evidence that masks reduce transmission. On the contrary, it shows that masks did absolutely nothing. <laughs> so it did, however, um, determine that the masks were associated with potential harms such as promoting social cohesion. Now, people say well, this is a good thing, you know, because um, people will engage in physical distancing and maybe they'll opt to go online instead of to a gathering or maybe they'll um, travel alone in their car rather than taking the bus or things like that that may limit the spread of COVID-19. Okay, that's that's all well and good that it limits the spread of COVID-19. However, it does promote fear within the community. There may might be an unnecessary um, overreaction to the COVID-19 when, when everybody's wearing masks and you know, we have these detrimental effects of um, social distancing for example like elderly people staying in their homes we have an increase in depression we have an increase in suicide rates among the youth we have an, um, a decrease in learning ability with children and with, well, with students in general I suppose uh, having to learn online it's a, this, is, this has been known for a long time that online learning um, is less uh, beneficial or less conducive to learning than um, physically going to lectures or physically attending school. So this this fear that it generates does have a negative impact on the society on society as a whole, as well as having a possible positive impact on the COVID nineteen crisis, if it is a crisis at all. Um, the masks they interfere with social learning. The children they have to see your expressions, they have to see your faces. You know, can you imagine a child growing up not seeing anybody's face? Like just growing up with a bunch of robots? It's terrible. Uh, it encourages dehydration, which is a very significant factor, a risk factor in um, a numeral, um, numerous diseases. Dehydration is, <laughs> is a really, really bad thing. And masks, obviously if you're wearing a mask all day, you're going to drink less. You're going to be less likely to take a sip of water every half hour or so. Promotes facial alkalinization, which can lead to things like skin irritation and um, other um, problems with your face. Increases headaches and decreases cognitive function. Now the problem with that is, you know, it's going to promote medical errors within clinicians. But also if you think you're wearing, people are wearing their masks when they're driving, even when they're driving alone. These crazy people are wearing their mask, and they're decreasing their cognitive function. That's increasing the likelihood of having a, a car accident. It inhibits, if you have decreased cognitive function, it's going to inhibit the concentration of learning, whether you're in a church, whether you're in a school, whether you're in a, in a, in a board meeting, or whether you're in a parliament <laughs> making these crucial decisions that affect society, you're going to have decreased cognitive function. So masks do have associated potential harms. Very bad. So that's a basic roundup of the current literature that I've surveyed anyway. Uh, there's, there's so much out there, you can't, it's, it's difficult to go through it all. Um, this took me a long time just to go through these few studies. But, you know, weighing them all up, you see all the confounding variables within the studies that um, profess to see um, reduction in COVID-19 transmission due to the use of masks. Well, in fact, it's just, it's, uh, yeah, there's nothing significant about it. You know, there's, like, that Bangladeshi study that showed under 50s had no reduction at all. You know, just things like that. You're thinking, there's obviously a lot of politics involved, obviously a lot of propaganda going on, especially in scientific journals such as Nature. You know, it's like everyone watches CNN and just um, just spits out the same narrative that whatever these, I don't know what the secret agenda is behind all these elites and the mainstream media, why they're promoting this fear. Um, and what the politics is behind it, but we know uh, there's, there's, it's not based on science, absolutely not based on science. So, yeah, well, there you have it. Um, we'll conclude there, but uh, yeah, don't wear a mask, and especially don't let your children wear masks, that's ridiculous. Go mask free at church, go mask free in your business, unless the government is mandating it, stay, stay well away from them because there are harms associated 
and the benefits are not there in the science at all.